Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have the UpSquared, otherwise known as the UpBoard 2, and I want to add an external GPU to it. I've done a couple other videos on this board and I'll leave links in the description so you can check those out. I did test it with the built-in HD505 graphics. The model I have here has four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM soldered to the board, and it also has the Intel Celeron N4200 CPU. This is a quad core CPU. It does turbo up to 2.5 gigahertz, but the main downside of this board for at least gaming is the built-in Intel HD graphics chip. Now this board is not advertised as a gaming machine at all, but I want to see how it performs with an MSI 1050Ti 4GB GPU connected to it. The UpSquare does not have a PCI X16 slot, but it does have a mini PCI X1 slot. I definitely won't be getting the max performance out of this 1050Ti running it in PCI X1 mode, but I'm pretty sure it's going to outperform the built-in HD505 GPU on the UpBoard. In order for this to work correctly, I had to convert the mini PCI E slot that's on the UpBoard to a PCI X1 slot. Now there are several ways to go about this. I just bought a cheap adapter on Amazon. I think it was about $11. Instead of buying some Pico power supply, I just used a power supply that I had. I jumped the connector on it so it'll run all the time when I turn it on. I just ran one of the four pin Molex connectors from the power supply to the PCI adapter that I bought on Amazon. This will allow the card to be powered and I shouldn't run into any under voltage errors that I might encounter. Let's get a couple questions out of the way before they fill the comment section. First question, why? because I can. I didn't just go out and buy this 1050 Ti for this experiment. I actually have this for another project that I'm working on and I figured I'd go ahead and try it out on the upboard. Second question, why aren't you using a PCI X16 to mini PCI X1? Well, even if I did that, it'd still be running at the X1 speeds. Third question, is it really worth it? No, it will not be worth it. The upboard squared is a pretty expensive unit for what you're getting, but it's not made for gaming. This is specifically designed for makers and hackers but I want a game on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I got all my drivers set up, and this does work. I wanna show you some performance in Skyrim, GTA 5, and Doom. If you guys are interested, I can do a separate video on emulation with this setup, but I wanted to test Skyrim, Doom, and GTA 5 because on the built-in graphics, Skyrim ran at about 40 FPS on the lowest settings. GTA 5 wouldn't even start, and Doom wouldn't start either. We're gonna go ahead, move over to Windows 10, I got everything set up and see the performance. All right, so here we are at Windows 10. As you can see, I have the Intel Pentium N4200 at 1.1 gigahertz. This will turbo up to 2.5. Only four gigabytes of memory, but I only have 2.2 available. We're gonna move on down. GPU, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Now this is the four gigabyte model. I also have MSI Afterburner installed. I just want to show you that this is the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4GB. Now this GPU is not going to run as well as it would if it was in a PCI X16 slot. We're using a PCI X1 slot, but like I mentioned, I'm pretty sure it's going to outperform the built-in GPU. First up, we're going to go with Skyrim. This is one of the games I tested in a previous video with the built-in graphics, and it ran at about 40 FPS at 720p low settings. I want to see if we can jack that up to high settings, 1080p. So I want to test this on the highest settings, so I'll go to Options, and I'll just click on High. It's going to default everything to high settings or high quality. Also, the resolution here, I can't go to 1080p. I'm not sure if it's because Skyrim didn't run at 1080p, but I'm gonna go as high as I can, which is 1680 by 1050. We're gonna click OK and get right into some gameplay. FPS is listed up in the top left hand corner, We're running DirectX 9, and as you can see, 60 FPS, I have seen it dip down. Now, like I mentioned before, I tried this with the built in HD505 GPU. I had to set it to low, and we only got 40 FPS. As you saw, I set it to high and I have it on the max resolution I could get out of the game. And it's running pretty good. We're down to 56, 55, 54 FPS. Just keep an eye on that. I'm gonna play through a little bit, but the 1050 Ti that I added is definitely working.
so we're not quite at 60 FPS all the time. If we turn some of the settings down, we could definitely get there. The 1050 Ti is more than enough to run Skyrim, but we're not getting full potential out of that GPU because we're only running off a of PCIe X1 slot instead of a PCIe X16. But it most definitely increased performance of this whole unit. Next up, I wanted to test Doom. Now I tried to run it in Vulkan, but it took so long to load, I didn't think it was gonna finish up, so I switched back to OpenGL 4.5, and that's what I'm gonna be running it at. So here's Doom. I have everything on low. It is at 1080p. I have the FPS listed on the left hand and the right hand corner. We're doing OpenGL 4.5 because Vulkan just wouldn't load. I sat there for about 10 minutes and I was afraid it was just gonna freeze up. This game wouldn't even start with the built-in GPU, so I'm surprised it's running this well. Now if we went down to 720, I'm sure we could get a full 60 FPS continuously out of this, but I wanted to see if it would do 1080p, and this is still playable. I'm really stoked that it's running this well. I mean, this is very surprising to me. I thought we'd be at about 20 FPS, even with the 1050. Just the way everything's set up, I did not think this game would run. And the final test in this video, I'm going to be running GTA 5. So here we are with GTA 5. I have everything set to low and we're running at 720p. There was no way this was going to run any other way. So this wouldn't even start before, and we're at 40 FPS, it will dip down when we go a little faster in the car. So even though I already answered the question, somebody's going to ask it again, why would you do this and not just buy, you know, a used computer or build your own computer? This is just an experiment I've been wanting to do on different boards, but I have never had the ability to do it until now. The UpSquared did offer a mini PCI slot, so I figured I'd convert it over and add a video card. For me, myself, I already have a gaming machine that'll pretty much run anything that I throw at it at 4K, so I'm not worried about that. If you back this on Kickstarter and you wanted a little more performance, you can always add an external GPU. It's not going to be top of the line, and you don't need to buy a 1050 Ti to do it. You can get on your local Craigslist and find an old 750, throw it on there with the $11 adapter, and get better performance out of your upboard squared. So that's it for this video guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you are interested in seeing some emulation performance using this same setup, please let me know in the comments below. I can probably have another video made by this weekend, and I'm sure a lot of people might be interested. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe, I'm going to leave links to the other videos I did on the upboard without an external GPU, and like always, thanks for watching.